What did he say his name was? Gabatron. When people talk about the problems with Hell Let Loose, there is always one thing at the top of the list. The other issue that is also quite confusing as to why we don't have one is the fact that we don't have a tutorial. And I'm going to keep saying this because a lot of things didn't come with this update. We still don't have a tutorial. The, the games haven't been that yeah, great that is right. because there is no tutorial for new players for Hell Let Loose. I'm here to tell you why that's wrong. Or rather, why that's not the real problem with Hell Let Loose right now. Right now, we have another problem that's hurting the game, I think, even more. Now, would a basic tutorial be good? Of course. New players coming from a tutorial would immediately be able to better apply the game's mechanics to the problems that arise on the Hell Let Loose battlefield. As it is currently, more knowledgeable players have to tell new players the basics. This can get annoying over time and can lead to inefficiencies during matches. Trust me, I know. But while slightly annoying, these conversations are usually short and productive. Just so you guys know, I have no idea what I'm doing and I just downloaded the game. <laughs> Sounds good. Do you know what an OP is? A what? What's an OP? An OP is an outpost. That's... It's a squad spawn. I don't know. I got this like weird stopwatch thing. I'm like running through some houses right now trying to figure out what's what. We'll see. Y yes, the, the answer is yes. All right. I just placed one down. Um, I'm probably Thank gonna you. place down a better one. This is this is just the you know the for now OP. Sounds great. Thanks. And just like that, I became better than a full 40% of. <laughs> squad leaders and can also be followed by a quick check out such and such's youtube channel to learn more so i only do this once per game um but if you guys do want to learn more about the game i have a youtube channel called gebatron gaming i make guides to hell let loose you can check it out if you'd like but that isn't why hell let loose isn't as fun to play as it used to be it's not because a new player is asking me how outposts work it isn't because i have to tell my new support player how their supplies work the reasons my matches haven't been fun lately, and a contributing factor to why new players are struggling, is because of veterans. I have a few examples. In this first example, we just took customs. In order to control customs, we need to control the ground that would otherwise allow the enemy access to our little island up here. As such, I direct my squad to move south and east so we can attempt to control this main roadway and canal crossing here in grid square I-5. Holding this will force the enemy to either go north or further south, all while we are threatening their final strong point. In other words, they can't just let us have this bridge. In order for us to sustain our presence here, I decide to build a garrison. And then what do we do? Just drive it up to the point? Yep. Hey, sorry, Customs, I just dropped them. What I think is a pretty well-placed garrison that will allow us to build other garrisons in these areas to the northeast, west, east, and southwest of Customs to help us completely surround our strong point and repel enemy attacks in the areas they will surely come from. But eventually, this is what happens. Yo, Command, can you get me that crew. Gary underneath uh, Customs? Panther in the... Repeat jig. Can you get rid of that Gary underneath customs? There's a Gary that's too close to it. Yep. Build it up. All right, thanks. It's way better also, than uh, off the point, but... No, it's not. I'm seeing yeah, some... Across the river. Our commander was newer, and even with some grumbling from the team, this single squad leader's wishes are carried out. Now I have to go build a more vulnerable garrison further south, which diminishes my squad's ability to fall back if we need to, as we could be cut off. But that's not the worst of it. This new garrison, in the strong point, means we only have one team spawn on the customs island, where we could have had two before. We also lose the ability to project ourselves to the northeast, as it will take players much more time to travel into that area. Long story short, we just left an open door to the enemy to begin surrounding us. A veteran proposed this with confidence and conviction. He didn't ask where a good place for a garrison might be or ask where the CO thought a new one should go based on the current situation, you know, like a noob might. He literally had the commander erase other people's work to make the situation his own. And what are the rest of us supposed to do? Start a chat consuming argument? Distract our attention from the game in order to tell this guy off? No, we simply adapt because the rest of us are actual team players.
Moving on to the next example, we were able to hold the west side of the bridge, but were unable to cross it. A stalemate occurred and we had to change our approach. It was the team consensus that we needed an offensive garrison in order to cross the canal. We have no attacking garrison, so can't really do much without an attack garrison. With most of the team on defense, due to having no area control in the north, we were left as the only squad in a position to place one. The enemy is coming from the north, and we are here, so placing a new one way up there is next to impossible. There is a small area here where we can cross the canal without a bridge, so the plan is to get across and place our Gary somewhere near these buildings for some cover. Now this is not a great spot for an offensive garrison as the enemy HQ spawn is close to 100 meters away, meaning our Gary will lock if the enemy spawns. Something myself and my squad were aware of when building it, but the plan was to overrun this HQ so our Gary could unlock long enough to just get at least one other squad to deploy and help us. But this is how the team reacted to our garrison. Who was the genius who put our garrison in their spawn? That's me. You're very, in you're very indelible. We were able to unlock it a couple of times, but not with enough regularity or duration to enact our plan. Ultimately, we did fail, and in hindsight, I probably should have placed this garrison further to the west. Like I said, it was not a great garrison. My teammates were more than willing to point that out, but here's the thing. Not once, not once did any of these people complaining about our garrison suggest a better place or a new approach. These aren't noobs. These are veterans. These are the vocal people in these matches. These are the people who are ruining matches for everyone else and bringing the vibe down with insults, by stifling creativity and by not providing workable solutions. We eventually lost this match because we got surrounded and lost area control as the enemy crashed in on us from the north. And who did these players blame for the loss? The commander. The commander that did everything they asked him to do. So in addition to all their other problems, these veterans also fail to take any accountability for the loss themselves. Again, these are veterans. This has nothing to do with a tutorial. This has to do with arrogance and a false sense of superiority. This last example I have for you comes from the official Reddit, and there are many posts just like this one. This person posts, Stop shooting infantry with AT guns. Five munitions for one infantry kill does not make sense at all. Now the second part of that statement isn't really wrong, but this whole sentiment is misguided. I respond with, AT guns should absolutely be used as direct fire infantry support guns when the opportunity or need arises. From here we have people responding saying, the opportunity doesn't arise. False. It's arisen for me and plenty of other people I've played with. A map where this happens with more frequency than others is Purple Heart Lane, where there are a lot of choke points, where it can be difficult to dislodge enemies with regular small arms fire. An AT gun flanking the enemy from a distance can clear these areas much better than small arms can for just one example. I'm then told about the economics of the situation and about how arty is cheaper. This is absolutely correct. If we have arty support, then that's fine. But what if we don't? I'm then told we have to spawn back at arty and use it ourselves, and later in the conversation I'm told that it's even better to spawn in as an armor crew and bring up an auto-spawn recon vehicle instead of using my AT gun for infantry support. They even say that if they see someone using an AT gun against infantry, that they will team kill them with a strafing run. Now here we have veterans of Hell Let Loose arguing that instead of using a tool the game provides us to solve the problems we encounter, that we have to go through the process of switching squads or redeploying and sighting in Arty to solve these problems instead of just doing it with an AT gun that I already have. Not only will this potentially take me out of the sector or even my squad, but they aren't considering at all that one resource in Hell Let Loose that you can't build a node for. That resource is time. Time is a resource that starts depleting the moment the match starts. The whole time you're going through all these steps, your enemy is also trying to find ways to solve their problems. The person that wins is the person that solves the problem the quickest, not the cheapest. But even so, that's not the worst part of all of this. The worst part is that instead of teaching new players about some of these nuances, or teaching them about resources, or to check resources before using an AT gun, 
These veterans would rather we simply tell new players that we absolutely cannot use AT guns in a way they don't approve of, and if we do, they might team kill us. Now, to be fair, the original poster of this Reddit thread does, in other comments, admit that there are circumstances where using an AT gun against infantry is perfectly acceptable. However, he still admits that he tells new players simply not to do it because that's easier than teaching them this nuance. I see this a lot with commander guides too. People telling new players there is only one correct way to play the role. Nonsense. Any guide, leadership guide especially, that is telling players there is only one correct way to lead is being presented by someone who has never been a leader in the real world and is missing the forest for the trees. It's why I present multiple points of view in my videos and let you decide what works best for you and your situation. This is a big problem in Hell Let Loose right now. It's not the noobs. It's not the lack of a tutorial. It's the veterans that can't think outside of their own little boxes. It's the people who have long forgotten what it's like to be a part of a team. It's players who think they get to dictate how other people should behave on the battlefield. It's the condescending attitude and false sense of superiority that some of these veterans are bringing into the community. We need to open our minds and change our approaches. We need to start working with our teams instead of against them. There is a video I watched recently called Hell Let Loose Has a Problem. It's at the top right and I'll link to it in the description below too. Uh, give it a watch after this. In that video, creator It Stewart is voicing his frustrations as to why nobody is talking anymore. And some of it is because of the things I just right talked right about right. in this video. Why would anyone want to talk after being treated like this? Why would anyone want to be creative or work with other people that just got done insulting them for trying to do everything they could to help win? Why would they get excited to learn about these nuances of Hell Let Loose when they are told they can't use the tools the game gives them? That's what happened to me after this match. After the way they were acting, I simply started to go through the motions. I went from being invested to being complacent. I communicated less. And this isn't an isolated incident. This is happening in a large enough portion of my matches lately that I felt the need to make a video about it. If these types of matches can have this effect on me, then what do you think it does to new players? Or players who aren't as invested in Hell Let Loose as I am? I'm not even the only Hell Let Loose content creator that isn't playing as much anymore. Yes, some form of tutorial would be nice, but it isn't coming anytime soon. There is tons of content out there already covering anything anyone would want to know about Hell Let Loose. We, as veterans, have to do better. If we don't, then it's just gonna get worse. I'm willing to do my part. Are you? Now that I've said my piece to the veterans, I'd also like to say that you newer players aren't off the hook yet either. Hell Let Loose has a passionate community, many of whom have sunk a ton of hours into the game, finding out what works and what doesn't work, and when it works and when it doesn't work. There is no tutorial, and we recognize that puts you at a disadvantage. But there are tons of people who make detailed guides, explain tactics and theories, dissect the maps, and provide examples through their gameplay here on YouTube. Please take some time to watch some of this material to get a better understanding of Hell Let Loose. There is my channel, of course, but I will list every other content creator I know of down in the description so you can have your pick. I will also link to the official New Player Guide Handbook if videos aren't your thing. <sighs> okay, I'm sure I'm going to lose subscribers for this one, but I'm not here to lie to you guys, and I'm not here to watch this community fall apart. Subscribe if you want to be part of the solution. What are some other problems you guys are seeing in Hell Let Loose lately? Let us know below. Consider joining to become a channel member. Uh, check the description for more useful links. As always, thank you for the support. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.